what's going on YouTube Duke of Coral 62 here last time I made a video I showed you all my fish now I'm gonna show you all my corals so let's give the story of this reef tank I started my tank back in April of 2018 cycle took a little longer than expected it took about seven weeks cycle was over the end of June and what happens in the end of June in New York that's right reef of Palooza so what does Duke do drives down to reef of Palooza New York goes to Jason Fox Jason Fox hooked me up with a couple pieces of starters came home put them in my tank and of course I put it on forums and what happens on forums when you do things that they don't think you should be doing I got bashed why are you putting Acapora in your tank your tank just cycled your corals are gonna die what are you doing do you even know what you're doing yeah I knew what I was doing I loaded my tank up with tons of bacteria before I added the Acapora and I added bacteria after they were in so a couple months went by after reef of Palooza and I started adding a piece here and a piece there. Everything was doing amazing. So what happens when everything's running just the way you like it? You run into some type of problem. Of course, what happens when everything's going well, the tank took a little bit of a left turn. Started getting some turf algae all over the rocks, growing on my frag plugs. Then I got some chato from a local reefer. The local reefer's chato was loaded with planaria flatworms. That was a major issue. The algae to me wasn't the issue. Algae is very easy to get rid of. I don't use any chemicals in my tank, so I did it the natural way. Loaded up the tank with some cleanup crew, got some snails, some hermit crabs. Every night I would take the snails off the glass and I would put them on the rocks. Within a month, the algae was gone. Now the battle with the planaria flatworms begins. So as I just said, I do not like using chemicals in my tank. So I was not using flatworm exit. So I decided to do it the all natural way. Went out and got myself a spotted mandarin, got myself a couple of wrasses, did they go to work? But of course they needed a little bit of help. Now I don't know about you guys, but I don't mind doing a little bit of extra work. So what I did was got my Mag 7 pump, used a hose with a valve at the end of it, and every three days I would base the rocks, pushing those flatworms into the water column, sucking them out into a little filter bag, and for the worms I just could not see, my rashes and my spider mandarin took care of them for me. Everybody runs into issues with their tank. If they don't, they're lying to you. It's either algae issues or pest issues, but everybody runs into it, especially in the beginning part of the tank where you're just starting to learn and grasp the ideas of how your tank's gonna run. And as I tell everybody, do it the natural way. Try not to add chemicals. We really don't know what they're using in those chemicals. You don't know what's gonna happen down the line. See a lot of guys using these chemicals and a couple months later, a lot of their corals start dying. They don't know what they're doing wrong. I always say, it's gotta be from the chemicals you're using. Stop using the chemicals, do it the old natural way, put a little work into your tank and your tank will thank you for it. All right, I'm gonna pause the narrating for a second. I want you guys to enjoy the tank. Just keep on watching, listen to the pretty music, and enjoy. So anybody get into SPS, especially Acapora, I give them all the same advice. Keep your tank stable. Don't add anything you can't test for. 
don't change anything especially your lighting once you set it up keep it the way it is your corals will adjust to your lighting and they'll grow a lot faster another important thing is flow you need a lot of flow to keep your corals happy the more flow you have the better your corals will grow the nicer they'll color up and of course it will keep the detritus off your rocks and off your corals which will keep your corals nice and healthy so if you guys are thinking about getting into SPS just remember this it takes a lot more dedication a lot more time a lot more money so I just want to prepare you guys that if you want to start keeping these corals just get ready for all the extra expense and time that's going to be put into it another thing to think about when you're getting into SPS corals is your fish stock list you want fish that are gonna work in that tank you want fish like wrasses to take care of any pests that might happen to get into your system you want fish like tangs and rabbit fish to take care of any algae that grows in that tank it'll help you out in the long run and if your tank is not large enough you're gonna want critters like hermit crabs and snails cleaner shrimp anything that'll help you in that tank is definitely a plus Save the ornamental fish for last. Get only ornamental fish that are compatible with your worker fish. Sit back, enjoy, watch your corals grow. All right guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my little tour of my corals. I know I enjoyed showing you. There is no reef hobbyist anywhere close to me in Pennsylvania. So I like to show as many guys as I can. That's why I decided to make a YouTube channel Please subscribe, share, like, follow me on Instagram, Duke of Coral 62, and join my Facebook page, Coral Clubhouse. Thank you guys. I'll talk to you soon.